good. This is for you. This is for you. Someone sees over here. Come on. Yeah. Right. This is a gift for you. And there you go. See? That's a gift for you. Thanks for coming forward. Sit over there. Yeah. Makes yourself comfortable. So everything I begin with is always like this. I always put, you know, listeners advisory, unclear language, you know. I'm, I'm not speaking vulgarity, don't worry. It's just that some some of them are uh, not clear with Bitcoin or uh, blockchain or whatever. And uh, you know, I always like to make jokes about uh, you know parent advisory, you know, there's a kiddie bible that on the mounts will tell you why, you know, stuff like this. Yeah. Um, go ahead and use that as well. So, so um, TD Docs, uh, you was wondering, the, you know, blockchain is always about, um, blockchain is always about uh, payments, fintech, financial centers, uh, trade finance and stuff like this. Why shipping? It's like I always got a lot of people and tell a lot of people uh, why. It's like why shipping? Why logistics? You know, it's just supposed to be like Bitcoin, Ethereum, right? Yeah, it's like, uh, in fact, wrong. A bit of my background is I used to work in this company. I believe you see, oh, you guys see it about it. It's called Marks and Spencer. So I was with there to understand the business process. Um, they was going in round maybe 09, 08, they almost go into the midst of bankruptcy. And they come up with plan B and stuff like this. And um, basically, uh, they, they, they didn't, couldn't figure out their supply chain and uh, stuff like this. And IBM failed them tremendously. So uh, I hope no IBM people around here. Otherwise, this is going to be a lie because IBM is one of my partners. I was like, hell. Okay. Um, anyone knows about Bitcoin? Anyone have Bitcoin? Raise up hands. Come on, don't be shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some more, some more. Uh, okay, what about Ethereum? Ah, oh, you're still regular people. Yeah, okay. Uh, anyone at the back have Bitcoins? No? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one. Come and look for me. I'm going to show you this amazing hardware. Anyone know what is this? Yeah, yeah. This is amazing. Right. So, uh, anyone doesn't know, the, I don't, about half of them doesn't know what is uh, Bitcoin or blockchain or blah, yeah, 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 yeah. So, it's actually not, you see, there's a lot of KOM, uh, Uncle Sam, and the Singapore Uncle Sam is going to come down to you and say, oh, we're going to do a token sale. And it's like, ah, uh, where is your anonymity? Where is the KYC? Where is the AML? So if you did it successfully, that's fine. But sooner or later, Uncle Sam is coming after you. Singapore one and the FCC. To watch out for that. So I don't need to read this. It wasn't on control by any central bank. So there is uh, something like digital assets. So this, uh, this is the white paper abstractions. Uh, you can find out and figure out. Um, basically, is about the mining and stuff like this. But we are not doing mining. Uh, our stuff is on private blockchain. So there's no mining, it's just consensus. And if anyone want to know about smart contracts, uh, there's an amazing guy over here, Paul, he's is helping me as well on the smart contracts. Uh, if you know about, anyone knows about Project Ubin, he's the guy, yeah. Sorry, I, I don't mean to put it on the table, but yeah, you're cool. So, uh, yeah. This is what I want to explain about blockchain. Uh, blockchain, yeah, it's like 
a tiny little bits of blocks in here and you are just a part of the hash and this is the whole chain of things. It is immutable. To understand blockchain, you need to understand two core things. Do you know what I mean? Do remember two core things. Um, one thing is cryptography. If you understand 256 hash, simple enough, bam, you boom. Um, the second one is uh, decentralized distributed ledger. Uh, if you don't know what is that, is just Google it up. It's amazing. It's, uh, you, there's no single point of failure, and uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. Okay, so this part has been done. It's immutable, so it's a fully secure and stuff like this. Um, blockchain. What it can really solve? Think about something which is uh, email or music. If I send you a copy of it, you have no problem with it. But if I give you something, a currency or an assets or digital assets, for example, um, then it will be a problem. How do you then fight? This is real and I'll make sure I don't have this copy with you. Okay, so blockchain, it really helps to solve this problem. But there's a lot of dispute in, um, in outside and I believe everyone have some of them. You raised out the hand of the blockchain. No, no, sorry, the Bitcoin who holds the Bitcoin. Do you know there's a civil war outside uh, tomorrow? And right now, yeah. But the changes is tomorrow, first of August. If you don't know about it, read about it. All right, that is a total civil war. When I was in Hong Kong, and if you read uh, my profile on the scaling Bitcoin. Um, I met this amazing guy called who owns BTCC. His name is Bobby. Uh, when I met him, he was like, yeah, hi, I'm BTCC, I'm Bobby. And I was like, okay. And I was like, then when I go back to the website and look at his website, he's like, BTCC able to mine 1,000 Bitcoin per day. I was like, whew, you must be something. Then, the next guy I'm gonna meet is a young kid who built a POS system. And this POS system is like, I'm so cool, I'm gonna show you how to pay by Bitcoin. I was like, what, Bitcoin? Yeah, it was like, scam, must be a scam. But when he showed me right in front of the face of the, that POS misses, the IoT device built in front, it's like, you know, I'm gonna pay this, this, this. And it's like, hey, you can pay immediately. I was like, this is so awesome. Right. So let's go a bit laughter down here. <laughs> yeah. What are the common problems in the shipping and logistic industries? Um, I don't need to explain this. You can read it up, take a screenshot of it, take a photo, and you can, these things are, uh, yeah. Common problem when a shipper face uh, things like I gotta need to buy my insurance, uh, exporter need to talk with the communicators, the importers. It's like, hey, um, is your ship right on time? And my freight forwarder is gonna do my job. So, a bit of conclusion if you can't see it on the back. In the shipping process, most of the common problems is the ship missing documents. Uh, documents, not information, the, which is not exactly right. And most of the shipping documents are manual process and it's physical form and stuff like this. Uh, what things then go wrong? I was like, you know, if you guys, anyone in the shipping industry, logistics, we love to talk to you. Come and look for us. Um, Basically, what things that go wrong is all the classification of information and the goods and stuff like this. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is we're con trying to consolidate everyone on board on the cloud. Yeah, it's like, oh, it must be another iCloud, but no, 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 wait, wait. This is uh, just the beginning of the first race. It's like 10x having the credit cards and it stays you know, it's so cool, I can pay by credit cards using my Bitcoin. Uh, so 
what we're trying to do is something like e bill lading. So we put them on the cloud and digitize them. And if you go, remember that back in the days, you called someone else, say it's like, hello, yeah, I'm in there. But then next thing you know, who's still using a fax machine down here? Can you guys raise your hands if you're still using a fax machine? Nah, I think e email right now, yeah. But the fax machine is very simple. I just fax you, you get a copy of it, and I have another copy of it. So this is what I'm trying to do. But in future, we're gonna give you that away from the fax machine. So we're coming to on board with everyone and everyone on the board on the on the cloud. Right. This is the scale that how tedious the process of the shipping is. It's like I'm going to go and ship out one place and imagine you guys are just buying for things from Taobao or eBay or you know any e-commerce platform. You're thinking that hell I'm just going to wait and buy and just, that's it, right? But no, this is the whole journey of the containers. And all your shampoos, everyday use, uh, like, you know, soaps, whatever, your daily usage, like Colgate or whatsoever. You just imagine the amount of the companies controlling your daily products is all here. Just imagine uh, Jack Daniels. Here, right? Uh, who like to eat Oreos? It's all here. Uh, Unilever and so on, Coke and stuff like this. Yeah, this is the whole thing that is one of the largest ma capital market exists in the world. And eighty-five percent of your products are shipped by containers. Well, yeah, it's just like yeah, fine, but. If you're gonna put in your file in the manual process and the papers and stuff like this, there is no trust because I can just simply temper the documents and say, hey, you know, if I'm gonna import the stuff from uh, somewhere else in Singapore, uh, GST above $400, you have to do the pay tax, right? So let's do tricky a bit. Let's put the documents and say, this stuff is actually worth $1,000, but I'm going to put in documents and say, say just 399.999, so I can save that bloody GST. I was like, yeah, but you can save it once, twice, not a problem. But think of companies with the bigger scale. <laughs> Auditors, big four is going to come to you, and it's like, yay, what's going so wrong? Are you trying to do something else? Ah, that's a that's okay. Another thing is two T's. So I was like, what, what, why your company is TT Docs? And it's like, yeah, trust and transparency. We're trying to create a transparency, a trust and transparency in the platform. We're trying to build this on a consortium blockchain. We don't see competitors. If we see competitors, it's like we are scared of com we are not scared of competitors. We are like 10x, and we see, we see other competitors. They're doing, they're validating us. They're they're validating. You. We are not the first mover. Um, we we found that over the market, we are definitely not the first mover, and we found that um, there's a lot of people using blockchain and blockchain, but they really don't understand the key values of blockchain. Key values of blockchain is only two things, as I said again cryptography and um, decentralized distributed ledger. So we're trying to bring them on board and um, we are doing a private blockchain. If any of the competitors are doing a private blockchain, we we'll love them to work with them. So we're trying, we're not doing, a lot of people, a lot of my friends down here, I think, uh, Prakash over here, I like, say, hey, dude, are you trying to do ICO? He's like, no, 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 no. Make something useful first. Yeah. The whole key is, is there anyone using it? It's not the token sale or whatever. And we, we, we understand the value of what is the token is. Um, 
as I always consult Professor Paul here, uh, I don't want to put you in, but he's the best guy to look for smart contracts. If you really want to know about smart contracts, he's the guy. Um, so what we're trying to do is a validation. We're trying to, we haven't do a white paper yet, but we're soon going to do a draft of white paper, but I don't know when. I can guarantee you that. But it's just, we're trying to do is a validation between uh, importer and exporter to do a validation and uh, agreement. Agreement will be in the future will become like uh, is on the, this is on the smart contracts level already. Agreement is mostly more something like uh, you agree on something, I agree on something, and let's do automation vending machine, and it was execute uh, according to the rules. And utilities um, is this blockchain. We want to create something unique to the supply chain and logistics. And I would like to thank. Glenn for coming as well. <laughs> He's an amazing guy for the supply chain. Um, so we can consult on. And this, which is the record and the compliance, which is on the there, that you have that rule to set. Let me tell you what a smart contract's about. I, I know some of that you have been bought already. It's like, uh, yeah, I know what a smart contract is. Okay, so as I said, Fax machine, PDF, invoice. I don't. I think you guys you receive it every day during your work. You definitely have a copy. I have a copy, but it's not going to work on this contract. It's just a copy of the contract. So, what it's going to do is when you execute on the smart contracts, you have for digital assets. It can be a property or a land or the house or whatever that you agree on. You have hundred shares and so on. So. Stuff like this, yeah. And hmm, you're wondering. Uh, this this is by TechCrunch. I don't need to explain this. Anyone knows R three networks? You should look for them. And this is that's amazing that Goldman Sachs just says that there's a potential market value of that thirty seven B. Well, it's like not mil, it's B USD. Hundred percent of them do work with blockchain on the banks. I believe you heard the news as uh, oh yeah, OCBC is transferring some money to uh, to other branches using blockchain. It's like, all right. And does bank really understand blockchain? I'm gonna take you later. But what we're trying to do is TD Docs, we are very, very early stage company. We once again, it's a very early stage company. We are still going through the validation process. We are validating your partners and we enroll for programs and stuff like this. Smartport Challenge is one of them. And um, we can create a transparency and stuff like this, and which is uh, perfect, for, perfect fit for this shipping and the logistic field. Competitors. If you have, don't tell you about the competitors, you was like, nah, you must be kidding me. No, we really did a lot of homework. We went through months of finding out competitors, even talk to them as, as acting as customers. It's like, hey, I want to use a service. Are you using real as a blockchain? It's like, yeah, there's a list of competitors that's over here. Um, one of the real One of the rated ones is SQ chain and uh, cargo chain and stuff like this. We, we even pitched to MERS. We went to MERS and just pitched to them. And then you know, it's like, oh, yeah, doing this with IBM. It's like, hmm, we should go to IBM. And then we, we did talk to IBM and they love us. Um, oh, sorry. Does bank really, really, ex really, really familiar with blockchain? This is give you the answer by Bloomberg, uh, by PwC, and this is the whole chart of the journey that we're try trying to validate over the blockchain. But right now, in the current stage, I can tell you honestly, if you go and pitch it at anyone else, not a lot of people know blockchain, and it's like they only want to know three things. The core three things: 
can you do cheaper, faster, and anything better than my competitors or in the market does? And right, anyone knows what's this? Anyone has seen this? Can you us give a shout? Yeah, okay. So one thing is uh, SpaceX created something which is a reusable rocket. So if you build a rocket, it's going to shoot up once, it's going to waste a million dollars. So we're trying to do something, a reusable blockchain, which means that in the future, everyone is using blockchain. I'm just trying to advocate that until the day I die, because I believe in that. <laughs> and if you really, really believe in your own eyes, uh, if you don't, come and look for me. I might give you a bit of Bitcoin, a part of it. Okay. And um, so to, to use done that we is, is a long, long way. You know, when SpaceX created, they say, uh, I'm going to reuse the rocket, I'm going to send people on Mars, and people just tell you, are you crazy? Are you really sending you on Mars? And then you look at that, and what we're trying to do, and the shipping and the logistic industry has not been changed ever since I left my job. And right now, I came back. I would like to thank Singapore government. It's like, good Lord, they create this amazing holy church. And for me to stay here in, to talk about blockchain. Otherwise, nobody understands them. We'd love to talk to you. And please come to our website and give us a light or whatever. And we love people to advocate about blockchain. So we love to come to you, to me, after this session. We have community discussion. And I think basically, thank you. That's all. Um, I'd love to shoot out any questions or any doubts. Sorry, a bit long. But come on, don't be shy. Yeah, go ahead. It's not only about um, tokens, uh, cryptocurrency. I think it's more about uh, using supply, uh, blockchain to change to do something good to change what we are doing. That is something I really like. So you only talk about logistics and shipping, and that is part of supply chain. So yeah. um, my question is, what other uh, area in supply chain do you think can uh, blockchain can help to transport? R three, trade finance. You look at this, R3 is amazing. When you look at R3, it's trade finance. When you engage a smart contracts and automation, everything, um, you, you agree a buyer and exporter and seller and, uh, and buyer agree on that. Everything will become like a vending machine. So um, we, we ourselves, we see that potential down there. But we, we are now, we are we are nobody, so we are very early stage. We're trying to create uh, in near future, I don't know when, but we are still looking at that in near future that we are trying to create tokens for that shipping. But in order to convince, because our business model is purely B2B, and uh, you ask any companies down here, hey, please buy my token. They'll tell you, are you crazy? Yeah. So they would rather give you fiat currency on that. So once we the adoption rate kick in, uh, you see that people are using it. There, where, where is the ICO and everything goes come in? So right now is uh, we don't see. We we need to sustain ourselves. So we we don't do a digital bill of lading first to sustain ourselves, and slowly we're just going to step it up. And next few years, I hope that we can become like Flexport does. Yeah. Where's Jeffrey? Jeffrey knows about Flexport. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Hi, Jesse. Yeah. You, you mentioned that uh, bank done transaction in uh, blockchain. Yes. Could you, could you share a little bit more details on how was the transaction being done? Is it uh, through uh, crypto or other type of currency? Um, banks right nowadays, when I know that they're using private blockchain, 
they, they don't do public blockchain because of the gas price and the mining fees. Uh, that's one thing. So they, they transfer different branch in different countries within their own networks. Um, if you look at historical uh, well, records, uh, RBS, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, Royal Bank of Canada, uh, RBC, sorry, Royal Bank of Canada is the first, uh, first banks that using blockchain technology to do a transfer with each other. And for the shipping and logistics, uh, it's about last year, uh, it was uh, Barclays that using the R3 networks to ship uh, physical goods from London to all the way to South Africa. And it's a real trade. It's a real physical containers with around probably about uh, 1,000 bitcoins of the goods. And uh, for Singapore-wise, uh, OCBC, on last year, on the FinTech Festival, they have proclaimed and says that, hey, uh, we have transferred money physically from uh, digital assets from Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, then back to Malaysia, then back to Singapore, then back to Hong Kong again, back to Singapore. So it's, uh, they're using uh, to crypto tokens on, on their own uh, digital ledger. Yep. Any other questions? Does it answer the question, sir? Okay. So just imagine that next time you can just go to Taobao and use your Bitcoin. And I just went to Tanjong Baga and says that there's a shop that said Bitcoin as well. Yeah. So any other? Yeah. Pass on the mic. My question is, uh, can't you guys start off like Flexport? Instead uh, of waiting two years to become like Flexport. Flexport is very interesting. Uh, you can ask Jeffrey. Flexport, we even pitched Jeffrey before. So I'm sorry about it. Okay. But um, is Flexport is only the barriers from port to port. It doesn't really cover the whole container journey. Right? So Flexport only finds your... your something like your aircraft. You, when you buy a plane ticket, you, you need to know your next of kin is on the aircraft. And is it your next of kin is safe on the aircraft? So they will go down to the, this platform of Flexport, then you find it's like a little dashboard, and it goes up to one place to another from time to time. So uh, there's a little tool down there. Yeah. Any other questions? Does there any other questions? Sorry about it. All right. Okay. okay thank, I think. You. thank you so much, JC.